And welcome to Hearthaholics, the number two Hearthstone podcast in the world. Guys, this is really bad. We're dropping. I am your host, Brian, and joining me today are Andres and Billy, or as I like to call them, Andres and Billy. How are you guys doing? Wait a minute. Hold up. Yes. What are you they're, talking about? They're both the same things. Also, we would <laughs> never decline. We will always be the number one. I don't know. I was looking to... at the totally real stats about hearthstone shows and we are mm-hmm. we dropped i don't know who's ahead of us they haven't announced those details yet but we're only the number two podcast in the world i i don't believe you it's not even hearthstone podcast at this point by the way so we're doing pretty well <laughs> oh yeah of course <laughs> but, but we've we actually are. risen in the ranks We've just exactly, got number two in all of podcasting. At this right? point, though, I just have such a large ego that I'm kind of disgruntled that anyone's above us. So, yeah, I don't it's know. very de- depressing. Well, we gotta fix who, that. We gotta who, fix who that. Stole that spot, but exactly. We just need to make this the best episode ever. So, on that note, how are you guys doing? How's your week been? I, uh, so far, uh, go sorry, ahead. You go first, Andre. I should have singled one of you out, Andre. Yeah, yeah, how are you yeah, doing? Was, How's your week been? That was poor hosting, Ryan. No, nope, that was, was that bad. About? Yeah, this is why we're the number two podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is all me. Just of Brian. It's all of yep. you. Yep. <laughs> so, Andre, how's your week been? <laughs> I've been pretty good. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, play the new wing. Been trying the new bosses, like we talked about last episode. I've been trying to stay on top of my heroics. So. As soon as I came out, just try to like design my own decks to play along with them, and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with those. Yeah. This time around, they got pretty creative with like all the bosses and stuff, so it's cool. I don't know. I think it's cool solving the puzzle. Right, and uh, equally importantly, you have been playing RuneScape. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. Uh, I I went back to old school. I used to play when I was a teenager, and. Right. Um, I don't know. I had been out of the loop with RuneScape. I stopped following it, and I recently found out they had done a like, huge revamp on it, like a few years back. And it's been kind of going around. So, right. I, I just tried this, it again. I found this funny because I was looking at our little Hearthaholic Skype channel. I'm like, what? Are, what are they talking about? So, ex- oh, RuneScape. Wait, people still play <laughs> that? <laughs> so Apparently, kinda, they do. Get amazed that both of you guys are like into RuneScape for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> For people who don't know, that's like Billy. You know this better than I. But it was like an MMO back in what two thousand like two. Uh, it's it's, a it's real MMO. height. It's 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 real height was in two thousand and seven. That was okay. Yeah. Like, that, that wasn't when it was released, but that's when it was huge. Like that's when it was doing really well, and everyone kind of mutually loved it. And there was nothing like right now. There's things to complain about in the game, but back then that was like it's prime. You know, like everyone the climax enjoyed it. Yeah, that's its climax. So, what I've been doing this week, because Brian, uh, he happened to come across, uh, what, I think it was you, yeah, I think one yeah, of... Yeah, it was me. Either Andres or Brian came across um, uh, an image for the card game that they're releasing, which actually looks really interesting. I've been doing research into that, and I got really excited about it, so I also decided to pop onto RuneScape for the first time in, like, forever, and I couldn't <laughs> get onto my main account for some reason, and so I've made a new account. And I think I'm sitting at like level seventy woodcutting and forty no fifty something fire making, which for people that haven't played out of the way before, fast. Yeah, they're, they're the easiest skills, so I figured I'd get those pretty high, and then plus they're the most AFKable, so I can play hard so, at the same time. True to the Billy method, you like just see one skill and shoot it up to the top, and then move on to the next. Much how you do master skins and golden heroes, and like <laughs> yep. It's how you collect things. That mentality you... comes from RuneScape. That mentality that oh. I have with every other thing comes from RuneScape. So this is RuneScape what created kind of... Billy. Like this is Apparently. this is the origin story. Yep. <laughs> now that I mentioned it, that's a cool mentality because it's the it's the grindy mentality. Like that's how RuneScape is. You just grind your skills out the whole time. Exactly. Billy's yeah. just like, let's get a hundred Hearthaholics episodes out so I can start Runeaholics. Get a hundred yep. episodes of that out. <laughs> <laughs> Runaholics, that's the dream, boys. 
<laughs> exactly. It beats Scapeaholics, which just doesn't sound good at all. No, not at all. <laughs> but yeah, I played that uh, RuneScape like briefly many, many years ago before I discovered World of Warcraft and never played other MMOs again. Yeah, um, I feel like if I knew of World of Warcraft before I played RuneScape, I wouldn't have played RuneScape. That's probable. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Although, man. the charm of RuneScape is that it's a browser MMO, so you can literally yeah. play it anywhere in any computer. You don't have well, to the, charm of, the charm of RuneScape for me is that it's like AF cable, so I can have Netflix up on the other monitor, I can be playing Hearthstone or something like that, and right. I can be farming something that people consider to be like enjoyable. So for me, it's, it's, it's just the experience of doing something on the other monitor rather than it just being blank. So what do you yeah. primarily do in RuneScape? Do you like hit things with axes? There's, or? A, there's a lot of things to do. There's like yeah. a bunch of skills you can level. So you can do like wood cutting. So you just go and cut trees for a very long time and you right. increase the skill. Or you can do like um, melee fighting or range fighting, magic fighting. Hmm. You can mine. You can craft. You can. So uh, when explaining RuneScape to people that haven't played RuneScape before, they all kind of seem they all kind of look at it and isn't that a bit pointless? Because it's all just grinding skills for seemingly no reason. But that's kind of where mm-hmm. the entire economy comes from in RuneScape, like how people earn gold and stuff. And right. it's not a RuneScape podcast, but <laughs> all the skills work towards money, and then the money works toward different skills, which earn new money in different ways. And, and So it's, it's like, a, like a giant looping like player economy simulator yeah. kind of thing. That's yeah, cool. but there's also like a big world and there's questing and you can go places. And actually, they have pretty good like uh, storylines in their quests. It's like a they do. I don't know, it's I've like a really dorky, dorky, funny game. You can get lost <laughs> in like their stories. I met an ogre in my quest, and he his name was the map. And my character asked him why his name was the map, and he said, "One day we found a map, and I ate it, and all the ogre friends." started calling me the map now my name is the map i am sad (laughs) well that's deep like that got existential in a way i wasn't expecting yeah Um, some of the quests are like that it's it's really cool (laughs) yeah that's something i remember appreciating from the very little time i spent with runescape is i love it when mmos have that very like player driven quality to it uh I think that's something that the genre can really tap into is this idea of like an economy that is run by this huge number of players interacting with each other. And that's that's always been what's fascinated me even more than just like storylines or something like that, because it's something that's really unique to the format that you can't get in a single player game. Um, so that's cool. It sounds like a, a fun way to use or potentially waste time. Yeah, if you ever have about uh, 50 hours to waste, you, you know. <laughs> I really don't. Check it out. Hours. Check it out. <laughs> 50 hours? That's peasantry behavior. People want that way more than 50 yeah, hours. Yeah, that, that, that barely gets you through, through the intro, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I you feel, get my point. I, I feel, um, guys, I have a confession to make as well, because though this podcast is called Hearthaholics, which implies a certain, you know, fanatic devotion to Hearthstone, I've been yeah. playing more heroes than Hearthstone this past week. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that. I have. <laughs> oh, man, I love their little session we had the other night. I finally got to play heroes, and I was so excited. That was I amazing. I ended up staying, like, until 3 in the morning playing with you guys. Yes, indeed. You did very well, and we all really did. Uh, it was our first time trying a ranked, or what's it called? Hero? It's called Hero, Hero League. League. Hero League. There you go. Yep. Yes, and that was really fun. Very splashy interface. Very cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed yeah, that, that session. that interface is really cool. I play a lot of Heroes of the Storm, but being able to play it with you guys is an extra experience, which I really appreciate. It's been a lot of fun. Yep, yep. And just like all my friends just keep getting into it. So I'm like, well, I guess I'll show you how to play and you how to play. And then, okay, I guess I'll play. So like, I, I keep getting drawn away from Hearthstone. It's it's like, I don't know. <laughs> it's a problem, honestly. <laughs> Heroes of the Storm is not a game. It's a problem. Exactly. That is distracting you from Hearthstone. This is I'm running for office on this platform. We must eliminate Heroes of the Storm. Yes. Or if I was running for uh, for Australian Parliament, we must eliminate the internet. Which apparently yes, is, of course. is how you guys work. <laughs> Let's All not right. get into that because let- I will be very angry. So I'm, I'm at a hosting branching point here. We can either A, spend this uh, podcast talking about Hearthstone now, or B, spend it talking about Australian politics. Um... I think I'm going to opt Hearthstone. That's probably I, the best. I was going to go for the latter, but... Next it, episode, fine. look forward <laughs> to our, our long discussion on Australian politics. So we need to come prepared <laughs> for that. 
Um, so yeah, uh, I think the big news this week is Molten Core was released. Absolutely. Whoa, really? What day was yeah. that? I Billy, missed it. You, you, we should pause and you should probably go. Oh, okay. Yeah, hold on. I'll, go, I'll go beat it real quick, guys. Hold on one sec. All right, we're good. You done? Awesome. Yeah, I beat it. All right, so yeah, what do you? Let's just uh, run through this like wing by wing here with the bosses first, because I was as as with the first wing, I was super impressed by by just the the fun and the variety we got out of the bosses and their mechanics. The first one up is Gar. He was the giant. Okay, what is the? Is he a earth elemental? I guess uh, it I looks very so. earth elemental to it's me. Like a his fiery earth his elemental. hero power is like magma pulse, which he's implies f- fire, but he he's looks f- very, very rock. Firth like, elemental. Yeah, it's a firth it, yeah. Elemental. It's like it's like the sun of a fire and an earth elemental just oh, fused together. Gotcha. To molten magma rock. So I want Gar as a outcast. card. I want Gar as a shaman card. Yeah, Get he on looks him, badass. Listen. Yeah, he really does. So his his hero power was the well he was interesting because it wasn't just his hero power that made his challenge interesting his hero power deals one damage to all minions but on top of that he has like this board full of his own minions starting out the game I I have a confession to make what <laughs> confess it's possible that my first attempt at this wing on normal <laughs> and my second attempt on normal I lost. <gasps> Billy, I didn't did you under- kill yourself with that? Uh, I, I didn't did understand did- the challenge. I didn't oh. comprehend the zero fives and how yeah. they work. For people how that they don't stacked. Know, they had yeah. uh, death. No, no, that wasn't even that. I didn't understand how I was meant to fight against them. I understand how they worked. Oh. And then I realized, wait a minute, I can be a priest yep. and I can circle of healing them and I can do crazy. Yeah. So well, no, the, the, oh, be- the better no. thing with priests yeah, is that's a bad idea. spell. Yeah, well, that no, 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 spell no. works. That, that, that didn't really that didn't turn out to be a bad idea. That worked fine. Oh no! I, I don't think, I, well, I mean, Ak and I met the, the, uh, the first time. Would be bad. The first time I burst out, I wasn't using a priest. I didn't see that. I just yes, you know, I went at him with a normal deck, and then I was like, oh, okay, priest, and then I won the first attempt. But the, <laughs> like I said, the first time, the first two times on normal without running a priest, I I yep. lost, and that's the first time that's. I think ever happened in a solo challenge, so good uh, job, Blizzard, I guess. I'm fairly <laughs> certain I've lost in solo normal challenges during Nax. I'm not positive if it's happened during uh, Berm yet, though. So I, I've lost two of them. I just haven't lost like twice in a row to them. Oh. Like, usually usually it takes <laughs> me death. one one death, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, this is how I do this, so yeah. I'll just do this now, and then I'll win. What, what class were you trying against him at first? I think I... Oh, I don't remember what I initially ran into him, but it gotcha. wasn't anything I could take advantage of the of his minions with at right. all. Right. Paladin would be pretty terrible against this guy. I oh, summoned yeah. a minion. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't work. Uh, but yeah, he's, or I will use humility on your... Oops, now they're one fives. Gosh darn it. <laughs> this is not working at all. Um, it was but, such a cool mechanic because it didn't allow you to just kill a bunch of them at the same time you had to pace yourself and kind of like do one at a time or yeah mass dispel if you were doing a priest but then he would play more oh would he i don't think he ever did that to me that's really yeah, he had, yeah he had like a spell that summoned in three more and gave oh. him four armor i think okay yeah. he didn't play that on me very often the thing that killed me during his heroic wing was this is the guy with the ticking time bomb right no that's baron geddon we'll get to that oh my gosh that that messed me up a lot um, oh yeah i know what you're talking about yeah we'll get to that <laughs> that wasn't the actual name of it but yeah it was that it was something like that uh this guy actually wasn't very difficult because honestly before i had played it i just saw like twitter chat and stuff saying master spell and i'm like okay <laughs> and then i got into it and i'm like oh yeah that'll work that'll i really, actually really ended work. up using a warrior to defeat it like hmm. before doing the class challenge i was kind of thinking to myself how can i use his power to my advantage so I was looking for cards that every time they were damaged, I would get a benefit. Oh. So I ended up using Acolyte of Pain. I put on some um, <clears throat> the, the eggs, the Norubian eggs. Yeah. I um, mean, you, this is like, this is them saying you can use the Grim Patron now. Here. <laughs> yeah. It was really funny because I ended up playing Frothing Berserker in the normal mode on turn three. And then he hero powered and I got like an 11-3 
or something ridiculous like that. <laughs> and then he did it, and then he did it again the next turn and my brother in Berserker became like an eighteen something and then I just won on like the fifth turn just with two hits from that guy. Right. That was like the uh the Warrior Hero uh class challenge was very similar to that. Where they would give you all these cards that are awesome when when damage. Yeah, the class challenge was like that except with the axe flingers. You had a bunch yes. of axe flingers in the deck. That was pretty darn fun. Um how did you end up meeting him? You said you did priest as well, right, Billy? Yeah, I used Priest. Yeah, was... same here. We're boring. We should have yeah. tried to win with Rogue or something. Don't worry. When we get <laughs> to Heroics... Flurry. Oh, shoot. Don't worry. When we get to Heroics, you'll find out that I truly am boring. Oh, really? Yeah. What did you do for Heroic Gar? No, no, no. no. Well, uh, I mean, when we... Okay, so I, I, I'm a cheetah. I'm a cheetah. I'm sorry. This week, I had very little time to defeat the Heroics, <gasps> so I neck-decked. How dare you, Billy? I get him off the know. podcast. You I sinner. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry guys. We are very judgmental. <laughs> Mistakes were made. <laughs> uh, what did you net take? Priest for heroic as well? Uh, I think it was a Maz's priest that he oh. used. It might yeah. have been Trump's. It was one of the big guys. Big you know, guys, yeah. The, yeah. One of them. How dare you, Billy? Did you go with a... I also went with a priest to beat him on hero just because I'm like, hey, master spell works really well, except when I don't draw it. Let's try this again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> That's how I but, feel a lot of these heroic uh, things, and even just the normals turn out. It's like, okay, yeah. even if you construct the perfect deck, no, like it's not necessarily about your players. It's like, okay, if you draw it, we're good. But if well, we don't, we're in trouble. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite, where, like, even if I don't construct the perfect deck, I feel like I can draw into a win I didn't necessarily deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's... <laughs> oh, the normal modes? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Did even you also heroic... go go Priest for Heroic, Andres? On Gar? Yeah. Uh, I went Warrior again for Heroic. I thought nice. it, was, uh, it worked pretty well, so I, I used yeah. it for both. Indeed. I forget what is... Does he buff his power to do two damage on Heroic? Or is it just I, should, I think it does three damage. Mm. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, his minions do three damage, but his hero power still only does one. Oh, that is true. Yeah, otherwise those true. things would go off in two turns and you could not possibly... No, you're right, you're right. Out. I was trying to think, like, no, wait, that sounds very overpowered. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very, very overpowered. Speaking yeah, of... That thing would stick on that board. Yeah, uh, speaking of overpowered, we got the next dude up in line, Baron Geddon. This guy easily gave me the most trouble of any of them. I mean, not on normal. I mean, he yeah, his heroic mode was a little harder, especially because that ticking bomb was a little tricky. You either have had to had a silence, or you had to had a way of uh, destroying your minion or sacrificing it. But the heroic version was actually pretty intelligent about playing it when he had no minions on the board. Oh yeah, he was really good about playing those. I mean, okay, yeah. so the the two major things about Baron Geddon is one is hero power, which is zero mana. And on the heroic ability, it deals 10 damage to your hero if you don't use all of your mana in a turn. Yep. So it is punishing if you don't get your one drop. It's just like, well, I guess I'll beat him on 20 health. Yeah, it's um, that third of your health. That's like yeah, a huge punishment. <laughs> exactly. And then on top of that, he has the ticking time bomb card or whatever it's called. I forget the exact name of it, where he will basically cast on one of your minions. And if that minion is still alive, when you end your turn, it deals 10 damage to everything on your board, including you. Yep. So... It's just terrifying. What he would do to me is he would have nothing on the board for me to trade into, and then he would cast it on two of my minions on one turn. And I'm just like, well, yeah, I, Baron what? Geddon was scary. I feel like Baron Geddon was like even better than the the Ragnaros boss. Like I, oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I beat Ragnaros boss first time. Baron Same. Geddon was difficult. I think it took me like two or three times. It might have taken yeah, more than that. He was. It was really the hard. hardest one in this wing for sure, in my opinion too. I'm yeah. very happy, but I mean, last week I mentioned that these boss fights weren't particularly difficult, even on Heroic. Right. I'm very happy about the direction that the second wing has gone in, because it was actually very mm -hmm. difficult beating Baron Geddon, and like I even said, beating Gaur on Normal was apparently yeah, it difficult Yeah, it was much me, harder so. than the first wing, I agree with that. Yeah, it really makes Wait. you... Uh... What? What? Yeah, you said you said it was much hotter in the in the first wing. Than them. Easier. No, than oh, the first okay, wing. Okay, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> I didn't catch the them. In oh, and no, then no. do sound pretty similar. I'm going to give you that one, Billy. <laughs> one, one right. grammar point for Billy. But uh, yeah, I was really pleased with Baron Geddon. I can't even quite remember what I used to beat him now. Um, I feel like it was Paladin, but I don't know why. 
Me neither, to be honest. I don't really remember what I beat him with. I just remember I wanted something that could stay on curve. I think it was Paladin, because the nice thing about Paladin is I could stay on curve, but then get, like, a ton of minions early by, uh, by, um, getting, like, my combo with the, uh, what's it called? Muster and then quartermastering them. Um, that worked oh, really cool. well. So, I ended up using a Warlock to defeat it. Mm. It was a Demon Lock, and I used, um, the... Oh, what's the name of the guy? The demon that eats the guys on his side. Void Terror. That's the, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I used the Void Terror. I used double heal bots just in case there was a turn where I missed the mana. But with Warlock, it was pretty easy to stay on curve because I used Death Coils and with the um, tap, you could, yeah, the, you could usually finagle the whole mana I, uh, in the turn. I just went ahead and looked at the video file that I recorded when I was playing <laughs> the boss. And I used a priest, and with a bunch yeah. of youthful brew monsters and ancient oh, brew monsters and stuff. So when thing. he flew the ticking time bomb onto the onto a minion, I could bounce it back and then replay it. Obviously, this isn't my idea because I'm an original and I net decked. I so. actually <laughs> came up with that idea independently, so maybe you net decked oh, me. Wow. But no, it wasn't actually a priest. But I also realized it brew masters, and then on top of that, he kept throwing time bombs on my quarter masters. So I'm just like, okay. Um, I have really powerful minions now because I'll just bounce my quartermasters back to my hand and keep replaying them on the same uh, Silverhand recruits. And it was lovely. What a, what a lovely. sweet guy. Yeah, it's a Even pretty cool strategy stuff. too. Yeah, it worked well. But I like your idea as well a lot, Andres, with the uh, the life tapping is great because not only is it using up your mana, but it's giving you more options to spin. Because the problem is you can run out of cards and it's like I can't even spin nine mana on this turn. Yeah, um, yeah. It gives you more options so you can have like... Um, more more options to finagle your mana in that turn, and then uh, and then also using the um, the void colors, uh, if they if he time bombed the void colors, then you'd get uh, Malganis or stuff like that. Right, and that's another really nice thing about Paladin is the um, the lay on hands was a great stalling turn eight because it both healed you and gave you a bunch more options and used up tons of mana. So oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that was yeah that was my MVP of the match. It's also just really cool being able to like face bosses that have been cards in the game. So it's like it's cool, just like you know Baron Geddon so well. It's kind of cool, yeah. you know, going up against him. Like I want to go when, up against Lepernome. When they announced the Iron Juggernaut card, or oh, sorry, when that was leaked. Um, mm -hmm. before before GVG was even announced. Um, one of the complaints I had about it, because I would, I believed that it was real, uh, one of the complaints I had is that in my head they couldn't do Siege of Ogrimmar anymore, because for people that don't know, Iron Juggernaut is a boss in Siege of Ogrimmar. And I was like, well, now they can't do Siege of Ogrimmar for the, for the solo adventures, because it would be weird, because you can't, you know, it would be weird fighting a boss that is already a card. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that they're willing to do that, obviously, proving... That they are willing to with cards like Ragnaros and Baron Geddon making it into boss fights. Yeah, yeah, I don't see the problem of doing that. Um, yeah, I just thought maybe it would be an issue for you know, some sort of reason here. Really smart with Ragnaros as well because the one rule they have had is the final boss you get their card. Um, so like they they created Major Domo as a way to give you a new card, even though Ragnaros was the final boss of a wing. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's a good way of uh, finagling that in. Yeah, because these guys typically have some type of minions. It would have been, it would be pretty interesting if they started releasing like different editions of the same characters, though. You know, like a lot of card games, like Magic has different planeswalkers. It's like the same character, but a different version. Like if we had Ragnaros the Fire Lord, and I don't know, like Ragnaros of the Magma or something, which is like uh, the that's same not guy. Yeah. That... Or so... could, they can do it with the uh, dragons, you know, the dragon form and then the right. human form. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. What were you saying, Billy? I forget where I heard this. It mm -hmm. might have even been last week's podcast, so I apologize if I'm repeating <laughs> this. Um, I think something interesting about them bringing out kind of a second version of Ragnaros in a solo adventure in particular is it's a way to give people that don't really spend a lot of money on the game, um, because most people do spend monies on the, sorry, monies, money <laughs> on the wings, uh, because it's very hard to unlock it with gold. Mm -hmm. It's a way of giving pseudo free-to-play players um, a card like Ragnaros, which they normally would have to rely on RNG to pull. And That's now a really it's, interesting point. Yeah, now it's very easily obtainable just through the wings. Yeah, that would actually be kind of cool if they just like had, even if they just had like bonus legendaries for going through wings. Like if you go through this wing, we're going to give you Ragnaros and like, uh, what's uh, Alex Straza or something, just like, or whatever. So it's just like they give you a couple bonus legendaries for each wing to help you keep up with what the main cards in the meta are. So it's just like, oh, we have this next wing. Why don't you take Sylvanas or something like that or something, whatever is fitting for the 
for the given wing and kind of keep you up to date with the meta so you don't have to buy quite as many uh, packs. I'm not That'd sure really if neat. that's in the correct direction. I don't like giving... Hmm. I like making kind of pseudo worse cards, which is what they've done. Like Ragnaros, right. replace you know, to play Ragnaros, you would have to replace your hero, and that puts you on eight health, which is obviously not as good as just a normal Ragnaros, mm-hmm. um, because they still get to have fun and play with the card, but they have an objectively worse version of it, which I think is the way it should be. Interesting. I mean, it, yeah, that that is definitely the route they've chosen to go, but I do like the idea of giving people some catch up mechanic. Uh, it's just primarily frustrating when there are like these staple cards that are le- also legendaries. Those are the ones that mostly make people like um, feel they're very behind, as opposed to you know just optional cards that are legendaries. Yeah, especially the ones that are not like super super main and right. go into a lot of decks. Like for example, Sylvanas. That's an easy craft because you know you save up the sixteen hundred dust and then you can use that girl in so many different decks. Right. But it's more like. Blood Mage Thalnos, right? I still like, won't have Black Knight. Like Leg- Black Knight, Harrison Jones. Like the ones that are very yeah. specific and cater only to certain areas of the meta or only to like one or two decks. That those really hurt crafting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, speaking of Ragnaros, though, let's go ahead and hop on to the, the final boss of this wing, which is Major Domo Executus. And the guy he spawns, Ragnaros the Fire Lord. <laughs> Uh, By the way, I want yep. to point out it's a bit weird that they have in the in the logs for the for the wing where you like select your boss yeah. that he is Ragnaros the Fire Lord instead of Major Domo Ecutus. They have both. Like, not for me. It's just oh, Ragnaros. I thought you meant on the website, which is what I've been looking at. No, for no, my no, notes. no, no. I mean, I mean, on, in the in-game client when you're selecting your boss, right. it just shows up as Ragnaros the Fire Lord. It is a little weird. Then you get into it, and it's like, wait, where's who? Wh- yeah, they where's don't even Rag- tell you what the hero power is going to be. For oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. You you started as Ragnaros, but then Major Domo comes out of nowhere. Yeah, but I guess like- I guess uh, they do do the intro where they say, oh, it's Major Domo. You gotta kill him to try to summon the Fire Lord. Or something yeah. Like that. You would think Ragnaros would be the surprise instead of Major Domo, but hey, uh, whatever whatever floats their boat. So what did you guys think of this boss fight? Um, I like we uh, Did we discuss yet, Andres? I forget, because we were talking pre-show. Did we discuss your crazy tactic for this one? Uh, I don't think we have. Well, oh. but I fir- at first I started with an oil rogue, and my strategy was to just hold off yep. and then drop him... drop him really low, let him play all the molten giants, and then just in one... In one Blade Fury, just sweep everything. But I did then, I did literally the same thing for him on normal. I just ran Oil Rogue, and then Ragnos came out, and I bursted him down in one turn. Yeah, and it worked for normal, so I try again for Heroic, and it was just too much power, because when he goes into Ragnaros, it's 30 <laughs> life and 30 armor, yes. and then by that point, you're like out of damage, the only reason I did you're really low. The only reason I didn't do that is I had seen like some screenshot of him being at 30 health and 30 armor, and I'm like, nope! That's not Oil Rogue. Can't do oh, 60 yeah, damage in yeah, one Yeah, you turn. saw it beforehand. I didn't see it beforehand. <laughs> so when he transformed, I was like, what? Yeah. I was surprised similarly when on normal mode, he didn't have 8 health, but he had that 16. I'm like, oh, shoot. I was not calculating for this. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Oil Rogue was definitely can do it on normal. But it's when you get into that later stage that it's like, okay, so how exactly do I fight a guy who pops out with 60 health, probably has multiple Molten Giants on the board, and his hero power is dealing 8 damage to two of my different uh, minions or hero? Like. So I actually messed that up. When I went into um, the the normal boss fight and he comes out on 8 health, right? Mm-hmm. So then I went into heroic afterwards and <laughs> I had on board lethal to kill something that had 8 health. So yep. I killed him. Oh, out popped Ragnar. So I'm like, yeah, win, go face. And then I'm like, wait a minute, why is he not? Oh, okay. Wow, you were really charging face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, was, I was like, oh, all right then. He's got a lot of health. Didn't even think about how he was all just making these little clinking armor sound effects. Just yeah, like, yeah. Hmm. Just, just keep going, keep going. Doesn't seem no, but really unfortunately, I, I think there's a bit of a bug. Um, when I was versing him on Heroic, there was very, very many turns where he just didn't activate his hero power. Really? He had, he had the spare mana and all, just... Didn't want to press the double Rag Ragnaros fire. Are you talking about Ragnaros. Major Domo or Ragnaros? No, 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 Ragnaros. He just wouldn't attack sometimes with his hero power. He had full mana really? and everything. He's, like, there was legitimately a turn where he just passed. He's oh, just BMing. That's interesting. 
<laughs> yeah, Ragnar's BM. <laughs> he, sh- he showed some mercy. He didn't want you to die. Yes. Yeah, Liz Liz is weird. Is this, what that is like, called. <laughs> Four to five turns where he just passed. It was weird. Yeah, I actually never ran into that because the second he popped out, I had a lethal on board, as you saw, Billy, in our, uh, in our yeah. game. Oh, that yeah, because, was... I mean, there was a very simple answer to such power, and the name is Kel'Thuzad. Exactly. It, that you card know, was really good in that matchup. Pretty awesome that we used, like, the final boss from the last wing to kill Ragnaros. It's like, oh, that's true, yeah. The power Didn't of you... Didn't your Ragnar, didn't your Kel'Thuzad, sorry, get sniped by Die Insect? It did. But uh, by that point, he had done his work. <laughs> yeah, he had already brought back a bunch of guys. But that's just so sad. For so, Andres, explain your, your brilliant uh, strategy for this, this week. <laughs> so, well, after I saw that he has 30 health and he does 8 damage to 2 things in one turn, I was like, okay, I just need the beefiest creature in the game. What mm-hmm. is the beefiest creature? And, of course, that is Thaddeus. So I just threw threw in Fugan and Stalag with Kel'Thuzad, and I think I threw in like Ysera and my own Ragnar, so not a bunch yep. of other beefy minions. And my plan was just to keep it above 20 health or 21 health, so he wouldn't play any Moltens, and just control the board with like Belchers as a priest, and just healing and healing and healing until I drew Kel'Thuzad and Fugan and Stalag, and then I just built my own Thaddeus army. I had like. Six Thaddeuses and Kel'Thuzad, and then just healed myself back up to like 30 health. And yep. then at that point, I charged in and kill him in like two turns. And you accidentally and played Light Bomb. Is. And you're like, no. <laughs> oh, no, that would have been so bad. <laughs> but yeah, it was amazing. I saw your, you tweeted out a screenshot of it. And my deck was just me looking at your screenshot, putting all those cards in, and then filling out the rest. <laughs> like, okay, I can, I can reverse engineer this. Let's see what he did here. <laughs> And yeah, it was an incredibly fun deck. So You had Ragnaros in your deck, right, Andres? Did you get I to did, play yeah. it at any point? Um, I can't remember if I get to play my Ragnaros. Mm-hmm. I don't think I ever I wonder it if him. I wonder if Ragnaros says anything funny when you play Ragnaros. Oh my gosh. That, that is interesting. Yeah, I wish I could have played it, but uh, yeah, it should it just be like my board full. Instead of die insect, it should be die uh, me. <laughs> uh, oh, never mind. You should always try to miss, like try to hit something else. Or I wish I had the magic. When he rule shoots for... his fireball, he should be like, no, 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 yes, got him. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had the uh, the magic rule for legendaries, where in magic, if you play like a legendary creature while there's another legendary creature of the same like the same guy on board, it kills it because there can't be two of the same person on the board at once. That way, mm-hmm. the way to beat Ragnaros the boss is just play Ragnaros, and the other Ragnaros just explodes. Oh, oh man, yeah. super secret tech. That would be so cool. It's like how they can never make a demon boss, because you're just going to a sacrificial pact it. Yeah. Um, that's so sweet, though. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. I'm sure yeah. they would make it illegal. They wouldn't allow it. Yeah. I wonder if you can sacrifice... Like, if you somehow got sacrificial pact into the tutorial, if you could sacrificial pact Illidan. Because oh. he's a boss in the tutorial mission. Oh, that's a really interesting question. Oh, I don't even know if you could get it in the tutorial. I know. There's, I'm, as far as I'm aware, there is no way that it's possible. But if they ever like put yeah. the tutorial missions in the choose an adventure spot just for you to mess around in, I'm wondering mm-hmm. if you can sacrificial pack Dylan. I don't know. That's a really good question. Um, get on but- it, Blizzard. <laughs> But yeah, Andres, I loved your, your strategy so much. I ended up getting my Ysera down early. Then when Ragnaros popped out, I had like three or four Thaddeuses on board, a Kel'Thuzad, a Ysera, and then like two or three Nightmare cards from Ysera, that, nice. which is what gives you the plus five, plus five. So oh my God. I had lethal the turn, he, like the turn he popped out. So I'm just like, okay, that works. <laughs> yeah, I saw you had lethal. I sent you a message. You're like, I'm like, lethal. And you're just like, Oh, and you like sat there and counted it up, and you're like, "Oh, I got lethal, lethal, yes. good." <laughs> exactly. It was really complex. That was to very fast fair, counting, Billy. To be fair, it was very, very. I think it was exact lethal, and it, it was. was a, it was exact it was, lethal with playing a uh, soul priest and hero powering him. Like, yeah, you had the soul priest, hero power, and double nightmare. There was a lot of math going into that one. Exactly, and I also had like Emperor Tharason on board for like half the game, so I had a bunch of like a zero cost Holy Nova and like ridiculous stuff. So. It was a very fun, very fun. I wish match. I saw more of that game, to be honest. Very yeah, yeah. That I missed was, out on it. It was it was looking bad for me early on, but just somehow I survived the whole thing. So, it was, thank you, Andres, for that idea. That was the <laughs> most fun match I've had in this wing yet. So I'm, I'm glad I could help with that. The one comment I would have on Ragnaros is his ability is a uh, die insect, 
uh, deal, which is deal eight damage to random enemy. When he gets the buff to that, is it called die insects? Because he's killing oh. two now. Yes, it is die insects. <laughs> Excellent, because like they checked. can't pass this up because that's too perfect. Good, that's so good. I would have been upset if they, they kept missed that, that in mind. <laughs> See, I, I I keep the important questions. If we ever have a Hearthstone developer on the show, like I'm going to grill them with these uh, <laughs> these things that we need to know. It's all about the details, man. Exactly. Speaking details. of the details, Andres, we can jump in and talk about the cards from this wing now. Um, Let's do it. So this wing's been out for a little while now. I regret to say I personally have not been able to play with many of these cards yet. Um, uh, peasant. It took most of my time. I'm, I'm speaking like I don't have time. I've been playing Heroes. <laughs> <laughs> so it took most of my free time that wasn't spent playing Heroes to just, you know, beat all these on Heroic. Um, but I'm sure you guys will have some interesting insights, and you know, I can just throw my thoughts out about them. Uh, we'll start with, uh, I'm just going to go through sequentially where you get it from the bosses and then jump into the class challenges after that. Um, so the first one up, which you get from Gar, is Druid of the Flame. This is okay. a, what? I have actually played with this card. Sorry, go on. I, Fantastic. I like that. Just making sure I didn't get something I wrong. Just want, I just want to interrupt because I feel like no one has played with this card other than like five people in the entirety of Hearthstone. <laughs> I actually and, uh, have played with it too, and I whoa. had some success with it. Sorry, I interrupted Brian. Brian, you should introduce the card. Absolutely. Druid of the Flame is a druid card. It is a minion. Common rarity. It costs three mana. It is a two health, two attack. But don't worry, there is uh, card text on there before you just hate this card altogether. It says, choose one. Transform into a 5-2 minion or a 2-5 minion. Something important to note about this card is because it's Druid of the Flame and not some animal, it is not a beast type. Oh, wait, is it a beast type when it, it transforms? It is a, it it is is a beast. beast once it's transformed. If you pull this okay. from something like Death Lord, it won't come out as a beast. However, once you do use the choose one effect, it will become a beast. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. So it's like a it's like a raging fiery beast. It's actually pretty magnificent. One is like a phoenix and the other one's like a yeah, the lion. Artwork. Yeah, yeah, the, the golden like card lion. You get so much golden value because you get three different pictures in gold. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what do you what do you guys think about playing this card so far? It seems interesting. <laughs> you go ahead, Billy. So um, when this card was announced, and I figured out that they were, well, when they announced that it was Beast, I knew that once this card was released, I had to at least try the Druid Beast deck with, like, the, oh, the Druid of the Fangs Fang. and everything, and with the Flame. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, no, it still sucks. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> Druid of the Flame just isn't good enough. We need some more Beast Druid cards. I don't know how I would have changed this card to make it good, and we can't really it complain when we mana. get... Yes, one mana. Um, <laughs> we can't really complain when we get cards like this because there's a lot of cards in this game and when they set themselves up to create two class cards for every class this expansion, cards like this are going to happen. Cards are I, not very good. I feel like the difficulty is Druid has been getting so many cards like this though. Um, feels like since the original wave, so many Druid cards have been underwhelming or not. Because they got all their good cards in the classic set. Kind of, yeah. I mean, they still got balancing Wild Druid. Earth, they got... Savage Roar, they got Wrath, they got Ancient of Lore and Ancient of War. That's a good point. Like, their cards were just so magnificent starting out, they're still trying to balance against that. Um, Imagine if they didn't release Force of Nature in the Classic set, and that's what we were getting this set. Oh my gosh, that would just turn everything on its head. So, Andres, what have you been thinking? Are you on a similar wavelength with Billy here? Well, I started playing it, and the thing about this card is that I don't think it plays into the Druid that we all know right the fast druid or the ramp druid i think this is their way of saying hey let's try to make something else out of a druid and i think they're trying to introduce beasts as an alternative right and i i played around with it i made kind of like a token druid like the old style of uh token druid with the mm -hmm. violet teachers but i used the power of the wilds and then i put in the druids of the fang um and it, it had a good amount of beasts because the power of the wilds can double as a 3-2 beast and then the druids of the flame then you got the druids of the claw so all those are beasts so you can enable the druid of the fang pretty easily and it was basically kind of like a very mid-rangey deck it just takes over from turn three on and then you build a pretty big board and then you buff everything with savage roar or power of the wild or um 
scenarios and it it worked pretty decently it wasn't <laughs> It wasn't like the most amazing thing in the world, especially because the fast rate right now is a really good spot. But I think it's at a decent point where you could take it pretty far in the ladder. Right. Yeah, pretty decent is like how I would describe Beast Druid. Just, <laughs> it's just always been there. Andres, did you, were you playing Druid of the Flame in its defensive form or its aggressive form? I was playing it in defensive form most of the time. It's kind of quite hard to play it in the aggressive way unless you already have board control and your opponent um, is running low in their hand and you know for a fact that they don't have many options. That's the only time I would use it in the aggressive form. The cool thing though is that if you run cards that buff him, the 2-5 is actually pretty useful because it usually requires more than one hit to kill it. So if you keep buffing it, um, it gets better and better. And It's a minion that sticks on the board and is a beast. Right. Yeah. I wonder, do you think it would be better if it had like slightly worse stats, but had like the taunt charge trade off that the five cost? Like a did? three, four, like a three, yeah. four with yeah. taunt or something. Uh, that'd be, that'd that'd be, be a bit quite, that'd be quite good. But the, the two, five stats are really awkward. I just think the style of the deck needs to play around differently, right? Sorry. Just, I'd like to retract my statement of saying that would be better. The mm -hmm. reason I say that would be better. The, the the taunt and charge trade off with lower stats. Um, the reason why that would be better is because that suits the current uh, version of Druid. And mm -hmm. like Andre mm -hmm. said, with the beast synergy in Druid, they're trying to set up a different type of Druid. So maybe we don't know wh we don't know where it's going, right? We don't know That's true. all the other beast cards we're going to get. Maybe this card fits perfectly into the beast Druid deck that they're working. The thing on. I don't like about the beast Druid so far is it's just like so vanilla, like. All the beast cards, they're beasts, but they just have stats. Like, they're, they aren't doing very many. Like, Hunter Beast had a bunch of different interesting interactions, especially back when it was, like, Starving Buzzard and all that. But Druid Beast is just kind of like, okay, you have a 2-5 on the board, or you have a 7-7 seven, seven on the board early. But, like, there's not really anything interesting going on with the cards beyond that. Yeah. Well, to be, be fair, we to only have the... three of them. Yeah. That's true. So, <laughs> we, I'm sure that we're going to get more... And hopefully they can add some more variety to these Beast Druid cards. Because it does look like a lot of fun. And a lot of people yeah. have kind of said, well, Beast Druid synergy makes no sense uh, as far as lore goes. But I think it's cool. Why does that... It's... Wait, what? No, people have, like, it, it should be the Hunter thing, right? Like, that's mm. that's that's a thing that gets brought but up But Druid's a lot, whole thing are how they're annoying jack-of-all-trades. They get to do all yeah, the fun stuff. <laughs> but they're not... Yeah, they're not... <laughs> The complaint is that they're not really beasts. They're still Although I feel like they're trying to expand these archetypes, right? Like before, like yeah. Murlocs were kind of like confined to Warlock, and mm -hmm. then they with GBG they kind of try to extend it into uh, Shaman, and same with like Pirates. They kind of like alternate between Rogue and Warrior. Like they both can kind of use him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think a year or maybe two years from now, all of the archetypes will be available in every class, and they well. Maybe not I could even, I could see it maybe like some archetypes stuff, staying like pretty like segmented, but maybe just not to one class, but like yeah. two or three. You get my point though. I don't I don't mean like what I meant by that, not necessarily beasts being a part of every class, but beasts being a part of say druid and hunter and then uh dragons yeah, more, more being open mainly to different a classes. part of like paladin and maybe uh something else and then um, for instance, the warlock, uh, sorry, the Murlocs being a part of warlock and shaman. So yeah, it's interesting yeah, can, that there. I can been, see that happening. There are no Murloc cards from this whole set, correct? Yeah, that frustrates me. They they uh, they they bring out Murlocs for the expansions, at least from what we've seen so far. Right? Considering we've only seen one expansion, that's not really yeah. evidence, but. Lore so wise, would they have adventures. any way to create Murlocs in in uh, Berm? Fiery Murloc or something just like a that? Yeah. Murloc that's on fire. <laughs> yeah. You could make it like an explosive sheep, but Murloc. <laughs> I just like to imagine have... it's like Imp Master where it keeps slowly dying because it's on fire. There you go, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And and for the next Ramas one, they could have given um a Murloc that has death rattle do you know, insert ability hit. A dead Murloc, yes. Yeah. It's a zero zero that costs zero million. Un uh, undead Murloc. <laughs> there we go. That's actually not a bad idea, honestly. Speaking of Murlocs, goblins are kind of like Murlocs, and the next card <laughs> is Blackwing Technician, which is a goblin. 
Uh, Out of it is all a- of your transitions, it's probably the furthest stretch you've ever made, at least from what <laughs> I heard. That was, no, I, I that love was it. a I love massive it. stretch. That even as my transitions go, that was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Um, the like the Black Wing Technician is a minion, common rarity. It is three cost, and its stats are two attack and four health. And it reads Battle Cry. If you're holding a dragon, gain plus one, plus one, which for people who can't, you know, do addition, that would make it a three five. Um, for three. So, what? Just for three, so that people have that in mind. Oh, it's yeah. A three, so five you, for you would three get a three five for three if you have the condition. So, obviously, this goes in Dragon Decks. I have been on record on our pilot episode, which actually hasn't gone on air, so I haven't been on record. But saying that this card, I'm not necessarily like excited about because it still seems like not that exciting, even if you get the dream scenario. And I feel like there, are, you might cut it for other cards. But uh, yeah, have you guys done? I mean, I assume you haven't really played with this yet because I mean, it's basically, dragon. basically, this card is on display right now, right? It's just like it's there, ready to be used, but we just don't have the tools to take full advantage of it. So it's right. kind of like just waiting to be awakened so for for the viewers i'm aware that you guys are aware but um for the viewers i've been working on a dragon deck it's not necessarily paladin or druid which are the two big ones that people are working on i'm working on a rogue dragon deck Mm -hmm. and i've been messing around with a blackwing technician in that deck unfortunately like brian pointed out and sorry brian and andres pointed out uh we don't have all the dragons yet so it's hard to have these dragons in hand Although, it's been working out pretty well. Um, I've been really enjoying Blackwing Technician because she does what everyone assumes she would. She chews up two twos, maybe even a three drop, and she remains on the board for a long time while you're able to curve out your late game. And I that think it's sense. a really good card, and I think that it's going to be... Well, I mean, obviously it's going to be a staple for Dragon decks, but I think you're going to see a lot of this card once we've seen all of the dragons be released into the matter i think it's going to be a super popular card and if i had the dust i would have two golden ones of them right now all right so here's an interesting question what is that vial she's holding full of is it like dragon blood i I would assume dragon blood yeah Yeah. that seems problematic seems like the most uh evil and vile thing to hold if we're going to be thinking about this let's say you're you have a nefarian in your hand is basically the lore that's happening here is she's like sticking a needle in him, pulling out a bunch of his blood, and then buffing herself with it? Is that what's happening? Because she only gets the buff if you have a dragon in your hand. Wow, Blackwing Technician is a junkie. <laughs> Blackwing junkie. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I guess she's... Pretty hardcore, too, because that thing is probably really hot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's 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 looking all smiling and conniving, but she's probably just thinking my hand, my hand, my hand, my hand at the moment. <laughs> yeah. when she can drop it. So... Yeah, not much to say about that card yet because uh, you know it's kind of a to be continued sort of thing. It's uh, yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll let you know next week. Come. We're getting some dragons next week. We're getting one dragon next week. Indeed. But you know what we're getting this week, or what we got this week? Imp about Gang to say. Boss. Yeah, it right. is a uh, warlock card. It costs three mana. It is a demon type common rarity, and it has two attack and four health. It reads: Whenever this minion takes damage, summon a one-one imp. I love this card. This card is so sweet. Love it's really card. cool. Three mana for a two-four is already good, and then plus the ability that he has, it just fits so well into a zoo lock. It fits so well into any demon lock deck. Um, I personally haven't had that much uh, chance to play around with it, but uh, I've seen some people play with it, and so far, I think it's been doing pretty good. Yep. I mean, if I may impose, I don't mean to gang up on this subject, but this card is a boss. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. But yes, I agree with you totally. Like, I think this is going to be a really cool card to play. Billy, I remember you, was it you who was trying to run this instead of Imp Master? Or was that someone else who was no, running no, Imp Master no, that's, instead of this? That, that was me. So um, okay. I've, been, I've had a demon-esque deck around about when GBG was launched. I don't want to call it Demon Lock because Demon Lock kind of plays a lot like hand lock and this deck is not that right but it ran stuff like imp masters and when imp gang boss was announced i'm like oh sweet now i don't have to run imp masters but it turns out in that particular deck just because you instantly guarantee to get a minion without uh, sorry an imp without having Uh to trade into stuff imp master is actually better in that deck 
So mm -hmm. I am currently running one Imp Gang boss in that deck, and the idea of that deck is very different. And I wanted to play with these Imp Gang bosses because I crafted two of them golden. And I'm like, oh, I don't get to play with this this card very much because I'm only running one of it. I don't get to draw it, and that's not very fun. So I've been playing a bit of Zulok. And it works really well in Zulok because Imp Gang boss is really good. All right. Yeah, that's pretty... That's it's good. a better harvest I think, harvest I, think that was a, I think that's a cool idea, the one that you're running. Like the, It's kind of like a token lock where you just make a bunch of little demon tokens. Yep. And then it's you take cool. advantage cool of stuff yeah, like you just Demon build... Heart and Demon Fire and also um, Mount Ganis and yeah. stuff like that. I learned... Yeah, you kind of buff him and gain value from him like that. I haven't been able to play with it or against it much yet, you know, on ladder or anything, but I learned even from the, uh, you know, the bosses and the wings that this thing can be a pain to remove, especially early game, like yeah. when I'm playing yeah. Paladin. It's like, great. Death by, Death by it doesn't clear it. It gives you a 1-1. One, one. Yeah. So, like, that can still, if, if they decide on turn 4 to Death by this or, you know, have some type of answer for this and they pass it to your turn... You still have a 1-1 one, one on the board, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but in something like Zoo, uh, now I have a target for my abusive sergeant and my power overwhelming. And they had yeah. no way of dealing with that because Imp Gang boss is just too boss. <laughs> yep. And and ba basically, if you think about it from the standpoint of trying to remove this guy, if you hit it two times and give it and give him two different imps, basically you just gave him a 6-6. Six, six. A six six worth of stats for three mana. Wait, a six six? That would no, be a four six, you, right? Yeah, yeah. Because four, he's a two four and he spawns two ones, right? Oh, no, no, the one ones. One ones. Oh, one ones. Okay, I yeah, thought yeah. it was a two one. Oh, that would so be it, so good. But yeah, one okay. one still is a four six for three mana. Three, That's crazy. Three six is still pretty good for three mana. Or Sorry to interject, four, six. but I'm gonna forget this and it's gonna frustrate you me. You mean impose? But yeah, I, I, sorry, sorry to impose um <laughs> this card i'm kind of disappointed in the art not necessarily Me too. The art. i was looking at it and trying to think it was awesome and then i'm like this isn't hmm. not necessarily the art itself mm -hmm. but the imp it spawns so for people that haven't seen the other imps in the game there's cards like worthless imp and imp master and implosion all of which have different imps that come from the ability really? however um, Imp Gang Boss shares the same artwork for the Imp he spawns in that Implosion does, and <gasps> that's just something that kind of frustrates me. I wish there right. would be a different type of Imp that came out of it. It's just a little nitpicky thing, but it's something that could have been done, and I, I would have appreciated what? it. I a actually lot more. disagree with that. I actually kind of like that is the same kind of Imp, because it kind of makes it seem like that's those are the Imps, right? No matter what source you bring him for, there's one kind of imp, and that's it. But aren't doesn't imp master yeah, have a different kind of imp than yeah, implosion? Imp, imp has a different imp. Uh, sorry, imp master has a different imp, and so does worthless imp from sense demons. That's they're a all different. They're all different imps. You know, right armor. now Blizzard is listening to this, just saying we can't win. We can't. Win. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's a fair. It's a fair argument. I mean, I it's it's the it's, fact that we're having the argument is the hilarious thing. <laughs> No, or maybe yeah. maybe that's a way of saying like, okay, guys, we can't make like indefinite imps. We can't keep yeah. bringing more imps to the game. Let's just stick with the ones that we have. Yeah, that all said, I totally get your point, Billy, and I think that it is a little weird. Uh, and I would prefer that they kind of keep some consistency there. I also just like, I don't know, when you hear Imp Gang Boss, I think his art could have the art for him could have been a little cooler than he is as well. Like maybe like rallying a bunch of imps around him or something. Yeah. But he's okay. I would imagine that this might be old art because I don't think they yep. would have named a card imp gang boss and then made this the the artwork for it. Exactly. Um, the art just looks kinda like a normal imp and yeah, doesn't seem I've, to relate to the specific yeah, thing. I agree. Much. I feel like they just found an imp and they went imp gang boss. Exactly. So <laughs> cool card, but the art could use work. Yeah, I, yeah, not necessarily the art. Like I think the art of the card it's high quality. is fine. Yeah. But it just it's I wouldn't be I wouldn't care if they made a patch so that now Imp Master and Worthless Imp give you the same imps from Implosion, if that was the consistently consistency throughout the game. But it's just frustrating having all these different imp generator cards and now they there's like inconsistency there. Imp Gang right. Boss and Implosion share the same artwork for an imp, Billy. and Imp Master doesn't. It's just uh, it's, I believe it you mean me. there is imp consistency there. <laughs> you are there's fire imp today, Brian. <laughs> I believe you mean I am the fire lord today. <laughs> oh wow! 
All right. <laughs> moving. Speaking of the Fire Lord, we are moving on to Major Domo Executus, the legendary from this wing that you get by defeating the Fire Lord himself. He is a minion. He is a legendary. Nine cost, nine attack, seven health minion, and his text reads, Death Rattle. Replace your hero with Ragnaros, comma, the Fire Lord, period. Um, have you either of you guys done this yet? I have not. Billy? I have. Yes. Um, me and my friends were doing random decks against each other. We were just bored. We were just auto-filling in the decks and, and messing around there for a bit. And one of my friends came up with the great idea of throwing mm-hmm. Major, De- uh, sorry, Major Dormo Ecutus into the deck first and then doing that so we had some little fun there towards the end if we happened to draw him. Needless to say, it was amazingly fun. However, I don't think this deck really actually works at all. Did um, you die when you turned into Ragnaros? I haven't, but my friend did. He he played oh. ma- he I played Major Domo, and his response was playing Major Domo, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's not very smart. I can just trade and then hero power you. And he's like, ah, oh. right, <laughs> and, I, and I did that, and I won the game. <laughs> so it, it was a lot of fun. I like this card. If it ever is actually going to work, and keep in mind, I don't think it's ever actually going to work. No. But if it is going to work, it will work in Warrior. I'm because kind of, you have cards so, like Shield Block and you have Shield Maiden mm-hmm. to kind of heal past your 8 health cap. Is it like um, Jaraxxus that when you turn into Ragnaros, your health is set at a cap of 15? It would be like a cap of 8? Or can you yeah, still go above cap, that? It's a cap of 8. Yep. You cannot go above that. Only with armor. Only with armor. Yeah, which is the first time we've been able to play like a hero changing card with a armor class with warrior because before it was just Draxus, so you didn't have yep. that option. Uh, still, I'm a little surprised they released it with the eight health. That's just so crippling. Um, yeah, that, like it. You I think had, they I didn't feel like 15 health wouldn't have even have been overpowered or anything. Like Although that. the the hero power is just so good, yeah. eight damage at the beginning of the turn. That is mm-hmm. just. You know, also a thing to keep in mind for people that aren't aware. I just wanted to make this clear: if you have armor on already, and then you play Major Domo and he dies, it gets rid of your armor and then gives you the eight health. And for people who aren't clear, since I just totally didn't describe it to them, when you turn into Ragnaros, yes, you have eight health as we discussed, and your hero power becomes pay two, and you basically just do Ragnaros's ability, which is to deal eight damage to a random enemy, uh, minion or hero. So. That and is, unlike your access, you don't have access to like a weapon or anything. Just making right. that clear to everybody. Yes, exactly. So the, yeah, I mean, it's just it's got a lot of drawbacks that Ragnaros doesn't. You can't control when you go into the form. You don't get a weapon. You uh, you have like half as much health. So on the plus side, you get a nine seven for a while, and I think everyone just kind of skips past that part, or at least I have in my head a lot. And like that's pretty beefy, and it's own yeah, right. But then you have 8 health, so playing this card, no matter what, puts you on 15 health. Well, let's look at it. Yeah, that's the thing, though. Is it is it ultimately puts you on 15 health because they have to remove him and then remove your 8 health? So, like... Not necessarily. Shadow I mean, they can big game, big hunter, game hunter. I know, yeah. so. So it's Or any other heart removal. Yeah, yeah. not all of it. Because, like, like Polymorph hand. and Hex wouldn't work, but yeah. Well, Polymorph and Hex would deal with the situation altogether. They would, but they wouldn't kill you. <laughs> yeah. But so really, at that, that point, if you're running Major Domo in a deck and you've played it and it's got Hexed or Polymorph, you've probably lost. When you have a 9-mana card and your biggest benefit for it is it won't kill me, then you're probably not running yeah. the right card. It's like, well, the only answer to this could be not killing me. Haha. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Success. Uh, but yeah. But I agree. I think the only times we'll, we're going to see this card played is when somebody plays uh, as Needs Old Shredder and he comes popping out and things are going to get weird. That's interesting. I didn't think about that. That's cool. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. I can't wait to see that happen. Oh, <laughs> I want to see that happen in like ESL or something. Or like some <laughs> and then some just guy bam. wins with Major Domo. Coming to like, just start smiling. Yeah. <laughs> or it could go very wrong. The other person can be winning and get Major Domo against a Druid or something, and then Major Domo gets killed, and then they get promptly comboed. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. All right. Well, we can move on to the class cards now. There are two of those, as there always are. The first one comes from the Warrior Class Challenge, and that is Axe Flinger. It is a minion, common rarity, obviously for Warrior. 
<laughs> it is four mana, two attack, and five health, and it reads, whenever this minion takes damage, deal two damage to the enemy hero. I have not played the Grim Patron deck yet, though I like already have it built and really, really want to. Uh, I imagine this would be pretty good in that. I have been playing the Grim pa uh, Patron Warrior deck, and I, I'm actually pretty impressed. I thought Grim Patron was not going to be that good, but it's not bad at all. Get in here, Andres. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Get in here, Andres. It's really good. Wow. For people that didn't catch that, that's what Grim Patron says, so it yep. was funny. Exactly. <laughs> I need you, Billy. I need you to explain my jokes to people who don't get them. This will be actually extremely helpful. But, yeah, um, Grim Patron. Yeah, the the Axe Flinger, I think, fits really well in this deck. I think, uh, especially against aggressive decks, like if you're going up against a Face Hunter, Axe Flinger is great because you can trade with his creatures at the same time that you're keeping on the aggression by dealing damage to the face. If you get two of these guys and right. you are able to trigger a couple of them a couple of times, it's actually a huge amount of damage. Um, it becomes a little less effective against really controlly decks where they can have a really big AoE and clear your entire board. Although the Grim Patron deck is just generally weak against this type of decks. Right. But uh, let's say against um, Face Hunter or decks like Paladin, the Green Patron is almost like a free win against decks like Paladin because they have almost no way besides Equality Consecrate to get rid of the Patron. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about this guy as well is he does, like, raise the bar for this deck. So, like, let's say you have a Grim Patron on board. Uh, you throw this guy down. Suddenly, it's not as appealing to, uh, you know, what some of the AoE, like the Priest uh, Circle of Light or Circle of Healing that doesn't remove this guy and they'll take damage from doing it or something like even light bomb which before was a great grim patron removal like won't work with this guy on the board so it gives you like some defense against certain aoe's um i just want to ask you did you make that pun on purpose which one you said you're gonna raise the bar with grim patron oh my gosh that's been <laughs> the best pun and it wasn't even on purpose apparently my mind just works that way apparently <laughs> is what when you're I not thinking that you make away, the best yeah. ones when I heard it straight away, I was like, Ugh. and then you didn't point it out. I'm like, wait a minute. He didn't notice. He didn't no, notice. I didn't. I didn't. It's like missing lethal, but with puns. Yeah. <laughs> you missed pun. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Twitch chat would be going crazy if we live streamed these. <laughs> yep. missed, missed BM slash pun. That'll become like the new metagame of this podcast is people looking for me saying puns without realizing them. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's very fun. But yeah. Uh, what do you think about Axling or Billy? Um, I don't know. I feel like me and Andres's opinions on this card, along with Grim Patreon, have kind of flipped around from when they were first announced. For oh, instance, wow. I feel like Andres was kind of not very impressed with these cards, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, these cards are going to be really fun and really cool and really good. And, uh, I don't know. I guess I've kind of flipped roles. I, I, I don't know. I've tried playing these decks. I don't really see that strong point at all i don't know i just feel like i lose every match i play with these decks obviously mm -hmm. i've won matches with these this you know enraged style deck like hurt your own minions with grim patron and an axe fling up but right even still I, I it just doesn't seem very strong to me but i i don't know maybe i'm just doing something wrong maybe i need a uh a, a sit down session with with andres do you like the idea the of the decks? Like, do you like what they're trying to do, or do you? Yeah, just not? it's okay. a it's a way of making warrior faster, which is always fun and different. Yeah, I'm super so, excited to try it as well. In the beginning, when I was first trying the Green Patron Warrior deck, I was trying it with uh, Raging Worgens and a lot of the Enrage cards. I was trying with the uh, Frothing Berserkers and um, the Amani Berserker, but I've seen other people get like refine it a little bit and I've tried a lot of cards myself and it works a little better when you play it more similarly to the control warrior at first with the acolytes you played with uh, some of the armor smiths especially if you're running into a lot of aggro and uh, your weapons and you basically control the board in the beginning uh, just try not to let the other person get too crazy and then it's all about the mid game on that deck like you do huge swings with uh, the the Grim Patron, uh, the Frothing Berserker can also get really big in one turn. And then your removal as a warrior is so cheap 
that you can actually play these creatures while still controlling your opponent's board. Um, the main weakness that I've seen is like going up against stuff like Demon Lock or a really hard control priest. Uh, the deck doesn't have as much staying power, especially because it's really vulnerable to like really big AoE. But the deck has a really good chance against most of the board centric kind of decks like Druid, um, even even Rogue. Mm -hmm. I mean, Blade Flurry is kind of a danger, but. It is, but at the same time, you gain benefits from your creatures getting damaged. So, right. They need to as long as you don't overcommit to a Blade Fury, you, you can be fine. Especially because uh, against the Rogue, he's going to be taking a lot of damage from trying to remove your creatures. Right. Especially with the new Axe Flinger. And so... that's a good point. Like with Rogue, it's a lot of bit like, I'll hit him with this guy and then back or backstab him and then hit him with this guy. I almost made a misplay in my head. I will backstab him and then hit him with this guy. And you do these little bits and bits of damage. And that's really bad against Grim Patron. Like you don't want two sources of damage removing him because that did nothing. Yeah, um, exactly. So you need it to be all or nothing. So you need to like hit him with a fully poisoned dagger or, you know, a spell power improved backstab or that sort of thing. Yeah. So. And then Battle Rage is also really good. Battle Rage tends to be a arcane intellect for two mana, which is nice. And mm -hmm. it can be even more than that if you get like a crazy green patron board. Although right. usually if you can get three, even two cards out of it, you're in good shape. And Battle Rage is the, it's not run very much. So it is the two mana card that draws a card for every damaged friendly minion is that correct friendly minion and your hero and is a friendly included. character is the word yeah friendly character so used. even if you have only one minion that is damaged you draw two cards which is already if you're you know damaged. a card a card for one mana so right. you're good yeah and um do you run commanding shout i do not run commanding shout i've seen some people run that that's mm. the one that makes all of your i minions like commanding vulnerable. shout in that deck is it? that seems like a pretty good card honestly i i would give it a try trading. maybe only one copy though yeah, I think only one, but it also like doesn't yeah. it draw you a card as well, or am I, does it not? It does. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so it cycles. Itself. Yeah. That seems like a yeah, pretty good Yeah, I, idea. I, I could see, I could see that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, awesome. Axe Slinger is just a card that I'm really excited to try out, mostly because I'm excited to try out Grim Patron, um, and it is going to go in that same deck. So, I just want to try that whole deck. It sounds like so much fun. The final card in the second class challenge card is. The Shaman Challenge. It is Lava Shock. It is a spell. I think it is, that is the first spell from this entire wing. Uh, rare Rarity. It is two mana to cast. And it reads, deal two damage. Unlock your overloaded mana crystals. Have either yeah. of you played with this card? Because obviously I have not. I have. Um, sorry, and go, go Andrews. I was going to say I have played with a card, but... I don't know if it was the type of deck that I was trying it in, but mm -hmm. I wasn't having too much su success with it. Um, mm. I, d I don't know. I, f I feel Shaman's still kind of a weird, weird spot. I think um, once the new, the other card, the new other one, the Elemental, right. that's coming out, comes out, it's going to be um, a really huge help towards that deck. Yeah. But For people I, that I don't, know. don't know the name of the card, it's Fire God Destroyer. Oh, okay. That is the one that is a 3-6 that gains 1 through 4 attack. Is it Battle Cry? Yes. Okay. But I was trying to play with it, and still Overlord, Overlord cards can be really tricky to use, especially because if you don't draw the Lava Shock, you're still stuck with the Overload. Mm, that is a problem. Um, that's the thing. If you build like an Overload-centric deck and then don't draw into these, then you're running into the same problem you are running into before Shaman. And exactly. if you like top deck, this is like great. <laughs> Two damage, nothing else. So my hopes went up for this card because I heard somebody whose opinion I actually really uh, respect because he's really, really good at this game mm -hmm. is Charky. Charky, okay. for people that don't know, comes from a Pokemon TCG background. And yes. he made a great point about Lava Shock, and that is if you build your entire deck around one card. And that's what you're doing with Lava Shock, right? So you can you can take advantage of the Overload Crystals. You would need to draw that card every game. And at that point, you could run something that is way more effective than getting rid of some Mana Crystals. <laughs> that's sorry, gaining point. some Mana Crystals. So did he have a solution to this, or did he just say it was a bad card? No, it, it was him explaining why he didn't like the card. Gotcha. 
I think it's a fair point. Um, yeah, I mean, it's such an exciting card because it addresses a problem that Shaman has had, but like Billy said and Chalky said, it building a deck around it really doesn't work. Yeah, I if you wonder... want to build a card, if you want to build a deck around a specific card that you have to draw, it you can just put some. You can make better decks. Like and, you don't and need the to thing get rid is, of some mana. And the thing is, like once you don't build a deck that is concentrated and overload, it's almost like there's better options than Lava Shock. Even Crackle mm-hmm. is better option. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, the two damage without the overloaded mana crystals, it's kind of useless. I wonder if like the in between though is that overloaded shamans will come back into vogue if this becomes a more control and less aggro heavy meta, and thus this will just be another tool in making that deck better rather than requiring a deck to be built around it. Like, I wonder. I just wonder if you could run some overload cards just because they're good, rather than for this potential effect you could get. From yeah, them. for instance, all of our opinions are subject to change when next yep. week. I think it's next week when we get Fire God Destroyer, or is it the week right. after? Yeah, I think it's the week after. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah, that I mean, my could change could be... it quite a lot because it is a four drop, and then on turn five, now what I can do is I can Feral Spirit, and then sorry, I can Lava Shock, and then Feral Spirit or Lava Shock and play a Harvest Golem. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it, it smooths out your curve a lot more with this 4-drop, and you'll see stuff like Unbound Elemental get played because now you have a 4-drop to follow it up with. Oh, yeah. And it's just... Yeah, it will... Opinions are subject to change once that Fire God Destroyer comes out because that's a really good card, and it, it could change it's Shaman It's an amazing enough. card. It's almost guaranteed a 2-for-1 unless they use hard removal like a Polymorph or yeah. a uh, Hex, which is great for you anyway. Right. And then at the bare four minimum, drop is so strong. At the bare you can minimum, trade with belchers. At the bare minimum, it's still better than a uh, Yeti. Yeah, which is crazy to think about. Yeah, that's really insane. Um, the only other card that has stats in her to it is Water fist. Elemental. Yeah, a water. Yeah, that's an incredible four drop as well. And yeah, it's one of the best four drops in the game. Yep. I mean, my opinion on this card is subject to change. Like, it could be subject as soon as I play it. Like, it is such a. I feel like it's a very nuanced card that is very hard to just judge whether it can work or not because it's it basically like it modifies the deck in a subtle but very powerful way as opposed to just like this creature is good or not like in terms of stats. So I'm really curious to see like what kind of the long tail is on this card. Yeah, we'll have time will tell with this one. Also, this opinion is not subject to change when I say this. Earth Elemental still won't get played because that card is bad. Sorry. Never is Lava Shock killing a Grim Patron? Is what I want to know. What do you mean? The, in the card art. Oh, hold on one second. All right, we're looking at it now. Okay. No, I. I yeah, it's just the normal dwarf. Because what I'd love to imagine is that's a Grim Patron, but since it's doing two damage, another one is just gonna pop out. Nice. So what is what is up with like fiery spells just destroying dwarves in all this guard art? <laughs> it's Fireball burn. That's it just too. what happens. <laughs> They're trying to summon Ragnaros. They had it coming. <laughs> yeah, it That's was summoning Ragnaros. You gotta fight fire with fire. <laughs> Which good was one, actually Billy. what I thought Ragnaros said when I first started playing the game. I thought oh, that really? when he was because because it's kind of it's very quiet when it first comes in mm-hmm. and. When he's saying, uh, by fire be purged, I think is what he actually says. Oh, to me, fire, being a new fire. player, not being familiar with the WoW lore, I thought mm-hmm. he was saying, uh, fight fire with fire, which makes sense. When that would be pretty it, awesome. But... I wish he said that, honestly. More puns in the game, please. Um, granted, if I, I need to read more of the flavor text. I have to imagine there are yeah, a lot of puns in there. This probably is. Yeah. Okay. The flavor text in this game is really funny. Yes, I need to read through more of it. I always just, it slips my mind because I never am needing to go into my collection and right-click on cards. <laughs> Sorry, for because you reason. mentioned that, I had to look at the flavor text for Lava Shock because we were just looking at Lava Shock. Oh, yeah. The flavor text is, and I quote, chocolate lava cake is shockingly delicious. <laughs> what? <laughs> chocolate lava cake is shockingly delicious. Okay. Get it? A... Lava cake? Chocolate lava cake? Yeah, I get it Shockingly now. That's delicious. pretty funny. That's kind I of like fun, it. too. <laughs> Good on him. Yeah. Good on him. We need, we, I just want to make a podcast of reading all of the card text out. That's what we need to do, man. That's the new <laughs> podcast. Flavor text is a holics? Question mark? Flavor text. Oh, my God. I have a great idea. What? What if every episode 
we read out a card flavor text and people have to guess it or the other the other part. Oh, that's uh-huh. cool. At the oh, start of the show, that could, that... we could we could have, you know, insert card flavor text here and everyone has to leave a comment or like a review on the I'm not sure how the review system on iTunes works, but they have to try and guess what it was and by the, at the end of the episode yeah. we'll we'll put it up on the screen. That's kind of cool. That's actually pretty awesome. Uh, I don't think oh, we should okay. do it at the end of the episode. We should do it at the next episode because otherwise they can check. Oh, there but you go. But what we should do is it should be our sign-off phrase at the end of every episode. It's just reading off a random uh, a random quote, and that's how we end the episode, and next time people can guess what it was from. Hey, that I works. like this idea. This is Billy, probably find me something a quote. that's... All right, I'll find you a quote. I'll throw it in Skype chat. Also, I need to make the obligatory joke about how the flavor text was about cake. Nice. <laughs> yep, there we go. Oh, Brian, you're the ma- you're the master. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and close this out. That was super fun. I'm I'm glad we got to talk about the molten core. That was that was an enlightening discussion, my friends. As someone who didn't actually get to play with any of the cards, I just got to get a briefing on what I should be doing. <laughs> yeah. And and I think I'm ready to go going forward. So thank you everyone for listening. Uh, if you want to find us on Twitter, we are at Hearthaholics. We are on YouTube. You can just search for Hearthaholics, a Hearthstone podcast. We're also on Facebook, where you can search the same thing, Hearthaholics, a Hearthstone podcast. Um, we are being hosted on Whales or Wales, which is a podcast and internet media network my brother and I run. So you can find our page there at whalesorwhales.com slash Hearthaholics. Also, if you want to uh, to spend some time with us and just chat, I run a game night for the folks over at The Angry Chicken, um, which is our fellow Hearthstone podcasting, who I suspect might actually be the number one podcast in the world once they release those details. We'll see. Um, but yeah, you can check out details on that. I post on their subreddit, which is reddit.com slash r slash TAC podcast. Um, and you can check that out. And I post there every week about the game nights we run on Tuesday nights. Uh, we just hang out, play Hearthstone, chat, etc. It is actually where I met Andres and Billy. So obviously amazing people go there. Um, if you want to find us, what? I said, obviously. Oh yes. Very obviously, Billy. I mean, if you don't know that by now, then you haven't been paying attention to the show. Oh, um, sorry. so yeah, as for where you can find our other work, I've already told you about mine, which is all up there on Whales or Whales, and on Twitter personally, I am Lord Meldor with two R's there at the end. Uh, Andres, what about you? Where can people find you on the interwebs? People can find me on Twitter at iPlayGames. You spell it I P L A I Games. You can also find uh, some of the music that I do, including the intro music for this podcast at soundcloud.com slash massive, and you spell that M-A-S-S-E-V-E, as well as massivemusic.com. Awesome. Yeah, you do a lot of different music production stuff, so if people want want sound stuff created for whatever they're doing, you are their man, sounds like. That's right. Awesome. And Billy, what about you? You can find me on Twitter at bbrawly. And all of the content that I do elsewhere is pretty much going to be on the Hearthaholics YouTube channel from here on out. Um, I won't be posting there until after Blackrock Mountain is finished. Uh, And you can find all of those links that we just spoke about if you're watching the video form in the description below. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, of course, Andres and Billy for joining me. Thank you, Brian. You're always a charming host, as always. (laughs) Thank you. And thanks, Billy. You were great. Thank you very much. And to... To sign off with our lovely quote flavor text that uh, you need to guess what it is, like Billy said, leave a comment, email us, yell really loudly, however you want to get your guess across. Uh, just let us know and we will let you know what the uh, what Carter was from on the next episode. And the quote is... Let the hunt begin.